here today because I'm angry. I'm angry because I lost my best friend, I lost my husband, and my children lost their dad, and it could have all been prevented. I had in my mind what I was going to say when I got up here, but I guess it'll just have to come from the heart. I stood and watched my husband on the job site. Well, no, I take that back. I didn't watch him. I watched the cloud of dust that he worked in. He wore the respirator, the filter respirator, the last year that he worked. But what good did that do with the cloud of dust that he set in? The blowers didn't work on the drill. The doors wouldn't stay shut. And I feel that it could have been prevented, all of it. My husband would sit up at night. He never slept. He had to sit, sit to breathe. We would have to fan him for him to breathe at night. When Terry was diagnosed at the age of 38, he got off the drill. But then what he was put on, he would get two and three days a week of work, so his family was starving. He felt he had to go back on the drill to, to feed his family. The last year of, of work, he tried to protect himself, but it was too late. But the age of 45, Terry's gone. And he wouldn't have lived that long if it hadn't been for the double lung transplant. God spared his life. He gave him two and a half years or more to see his children grow because of the transplantation. Every day, miners face hazards. Some hazards they can see, some hazards they can't see. One hazard we can't see as miners is silica dust. Silica dust causes a deadly disease called silicosis. We need to recognize the hazard of silica dust and protect ourselves for the sake of our children, our grandchildren, and our future. So what does the term silicosis mean to you? Uh, it's a breathing of rock dust into the lungs that uh, infects the lungs and never clears up. To me, silicosis is a, it's a dust that uh, comes from the rock. It's like a real fine fiber that's in your body, your veins, whatever, you know, and it's for dust, real fine dust. What does silicosis mean to me? It's, uh, I guess, would be what you breathe and get into your lungs and block you from getting any air. Lung disease. Okay, silicosis is a, a dust, that, a, coal, a coal dust that affects the lungs and it makes it hard for a miner to breathe, to walk, and affects their total living eventually. Silicosis is a uh, disease that you get from dust that you breathe in your lungs. Well, from what I understand, it's dust that you cannot see that is in the air, and I don't, I ain't sure. Right? When I think of the word silicosis, uh, it reminds me of some of my old friends that were deep miners all their life that uh, have a hard time breathing on oxygen, and uh, I can see their faces, you know, uh, not, a, not a good word to me. Well, to me, the term silicosis, on a personal level, uh, means my grandfather uh, sitting in a chair, having difficulty breathing, uh, couldn't walk to the kitchen table to have dinner, whistling when he breathed. Uh, medically, what it means to me is a, a condition that people get after they've been exposed to silica dust, and that dust has gone into their lungs, and it stayed there long enough to cause a health effect. It can hurt them very quickly or it can hurt them after a period of being very quiet, not having anything, and then really hurt them or kill them later. People who have a very high dose exposure, like someone doing sandblasting or would be in a place where the, the dose would be very high, might get a kind of silicosis that would actually fill their lungs with fluid and kill them in a matter of a very short period of time, less than years. There's an accelerated one that is a little less exposure that might kill you maybe two to five years. And then there's a kind that if you were a, a miner and you're associated with a smaller amount of silica dust, uh, we don't see it, the kind that gets us, but a smaller amount, it maybe would, wouldn't feel any effect for 15 or 20 years, but after that we would start getting sick and we would just gradually go downhill. 
father-in-law had it, but he passed away, and his wife's grandfather had it, but he passed away too. They, most people I know that had silicosis are no longer with us. No, he died from it. So other than that, I don't know a whole lot about it. You know, I know what it is, but uh, how it affects you, it affects your breathing and everything like that. I do know that because that's problems he had. He's an older miner from uh, around Central City where I live, and um, he calls a black lung. Um, he had quite a bit of time underground, but he spent 12 years above ground too. He worked on a strip job. He was on a uh, he was a helper on a Davy drill, actually. And uh, he has it, and he has a lot of problems breathing now. Well, my father was a strip miner, and uh, for all his life, he started in strip mining when he was 13 years old. He worked in the tunnels for a few years, on and off. He was in the deep mine for six months, but he couldn't take it. And. Here a few years back, they found out my father had bad lungs. I mean, he's, they're done. He's, they can't do nothing with him. He's on oxygen 24 hours a day now. And it's all because of black lung and uh, silicosis. And it's just, and we almost lost him, which I'm glad he's alive, but it's, it was rough to see him do that, go through that. And I wouldn't want anybody to go through that. But he's still going, luckily. Well, the old fellow that I can remember the best was uh, probably 80 years old. He died shortly after his 80th birthday. And uh, he uh, had a tough time of it the last five years or so. He was on oxygen. He had a hard time getting out of his chair just to change channels on the TV. He had it pretty rough. Like I said, I saw my grandfather pass away from when I know how how he suffered with it and I sure as heck don't want to don't want to end up with disease like that. Uh, the doctor took x-rays, uh, they took a breathing test to check my breathing and they told me that there was a small amount of silicosis which they tried to explain to me the best they could and that there was dust in my lungs and that uh, if I didn't if I continued to work in the atmosphere that I was in at that time without some kind of protection, I could only make it worse. The, the mining industry has given me a good living. Basically, uh, money-wise, I know nothing else <laughs> to the biggest degree. I couldn't go out and do any real physical labor. I've thrashed it around and I figured I might as well stay with the uh, mining drills whatever. This lung lavage uh, where they uh, introduced, uh, I don't know, I guess it was gallons of uh, sterile saline into your, through tubing into your lungs. Of course you're asleep through all this. It's flushed around in there and, and withdrawn. Well, it's affected, it has affected my my work to the biggest degree. Like I say, I take the shortcuts where I can. My 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 hobbies, I, I always like to walk, woods, nature, hunting. I've slowed down on all of that, uh, especially uh, the hunting. I do some walking yet, not to, not to any vigorous degree. Try to find a job out there. It's rough, it's real rough to find a job in the workforce and I've, operated the heavy equipment since 1970. That's all I've ever done. And it's a little hard to change jobs and to go into a new workforce that uh, you have know nothing about. It's, uh, taken, it's like telling a doctor that told me to change jobs. I said, it's like taking you out of your doctor's office and making you run heavy equipment. I said, you're not gonna be able to do it. It's not that easy. I said. Uh, it's, it's real hard to try to get a job out there now. That's why I'm, why I'm at it. I'm afraid if I do go out and get another job and there's a lot of physical labor into it, that uh, I will not be able to handle it. And then if I go to go back to the workforce that I was in before, that uh, they're not gonna hire me because they're gonna know that I had silicosis and they won't hire me back and I'm gonna be put out on the street. And I used to weigh 255 pounds, and right now I'm down to 165 pounds, 170. And it, 
has a lot to do with the silicosis and it has a lot to do with a lot of worry and uh, whether it's trying to find another job and uh, changing the workforce and every time I go to the doctor he's you still working at the same place and you got to come out and say yes I mean jobs are hard to find out there it's and it works on me a lot I mean it's worked on my family a lot uh, not not being able to do the stuff I used to be able to do it worked on me a lot and uh, that has to do with some of the weight loss they said you know now if you go into the the mine you're afforded an opportunity to use personal protective equipment you really should use that you don't want that junk in your lungs to begin with I know it isn't quite as easy to breathe and sometimes miners will change that thing so it's easier to breathe and they always giggle about how easy it is to breathe with their mask when they change this thing. They're breathing silica. They don't know they messed up their mask. They may as well take their mask and throw it in the corner. My advice is wear your mask. Again, don't get exposed to silica. It's a, it's a silent killer. We don't know that it's in the air to begin with and we don't feel its effect right away. But even after we stop the exposure, the silica just stays in there and I sort of liken it to a sandstone grinding away at the lungs. We're hearing how dangerous it is and how uh, so many people are, at a young age can get it. Uh, you know, everybody always thought it was you had to be 80 years old to get it, and now they're finding that people in their 30s and even maybe even younger are getting it. Yeah, there's a lot of particles in the air even at the cleaning plant that you can't see them in the air, but until the end of the day, you're usually pretty dirty, so if you're, it's on you, you have to be breathing it. It's, it doesn't get any better. It gets worse. It doesn't... Uh... It doesn't relieve itself even if you're out of the dust force. Try to avoid it as much as you can and wear the right protection when you're around it. It's, there ain't much more you can do with it.